The 5,000 subscriber appreciation giveaway draw winners will be announced at the end of this video. Hey, you're watching Cheaper Jeeper TV, the show that helps you get the most for your money so you get the most for your Jeep. I'm Dean, your host. Glad to see you here. I have with me Todd from the Trail Walker YouTube channel, and we are going to begin a three day adventure on Cape Breton Island. So, thank you for showing us around, Todd. Well, I'm glad you could make it down. I know it was a long drive for you, and I hope it's uh, worth the adventure. Oh, we're looking forward to it. And you can come join us. This week's overlanding Cape Breton adventure begins in southern Ontario as we make our way to the east coast. The first leg of our trip happens to conveniently end at Quebec City. What better place to rest? Now we will be off-roading, but that doesn't mean that you can't do it in style. By taking in the opportunities along the way, there is guaranteed to be something for everybody. And if you get hungry like we did, you can always go to the oldest house in Quebec for dinner. And if you're going to have a beer, try some of the local fare. And the second day is a 10 hour drive from Quebec City to Port Hawkesbury on Cape Breton Island. Port Hawkesbury on Cape Breton Island, we spent the night at the Maritime Inn to get some rest because tomorrow we start our Cape Breton overlanding adventure. Our first meeting was at the Lobster Galley on the Cabot Trail near Badek. There were a number of rigs that showed up including this Jeep Cherokee that you see. So after some preliminary introductions from Todd, the owner of the Trail Walker YouTube channel, and some preliminary instructions, the group proceeded with the adventure. So filled with anticipation and the sense of adventure, the group began its first trail run to the North River Falls. got to the trailhead we began to air down our tires and Todd began practicing with his drone and the drone footage in this episode is courtesy of Todd from the Trailwalker channel. Thank you very much Todd. Okay well we've started our Cape Breton Highlands adventure and the first leg of our trip is to the North River Falls Trail. This trail was not too bad it reminds me of the newbie runs back home. So when we reached the end of the trail, we stopped and had some lunch, then went on a small hike to check out the scenery. Well, the trail was pretty easy, so was the hike, and the view was astounding. I think we got off to a good start. So with my off-road confidence boosted just a little bit, it's time to move on to Cape Clear. Well, North River Falls was very nice. It was a very nice and easy hike to see that. But now we're heading on to Cape Clear. Well, a little bit of mud, a few potholes, and we're going to be there shortly. And with a short hike to the next few, I'm feeling like quite the off-roader now. Did I say view? When we parked our jeeps, the edge didn't seem that close initially. Okay, so that was Cape Clear and uh, I think we got some nice footage. Yeah, and uh, we 
we're, I think we're heading now to a special spot where Todd wants to have us camp for the night. So uh, I guess we'll have to see what's coming next. The next leg of our trip takes us on a similar quality trail to the Macmillan Flowage area. This area has reservoirs and dams built to generate hydro for the province of Nova Scotia. It also affords some nice venues for camping. So after taking in the awesome view, we began to set up our camp as all this off-roading made us hungry and our camp gear setup worked flawlessly. Well, as the sun is setting, it gave us time to reflect and we thought, wow, what a first day. So we're just going to relax and finish the day by the campsite and have some drinks with some newfound friends and look forward to tomorrow because we're going to a few special places tomorrow and I'm sure you're going to like them. Well, after some breakfast, it's time to leave the Macmillan Flowage area and we're making our way to the Rec Cove General Store to air up our tires and what else but get some ice cream. Come join us. And we're now heading north on the Cabot Trail to check out a few sites along the way as we go to our final destination. Well, it's easy to see how the whole Cabot Trail can be a visitor's destination, but all along the trail you'll find lookout spots that are definitely worth checking out. I guess one of the advantages of having an actual Cape Bretoner show you around is how they show you the out-of-the-way spots that are off the beaten path from the regular tourists, for example, Neal's Harbour and White Point. Let's have a look. And now the final destination for today, Meet Cove. I'd like to hear your impressions about this place in the comment section. So we're just about to head into Meat Cove. We're just having a little break here. I'm glad you're joining us. So let's get to it. By now you can certainly see this is a slightly more difficult trail than a newbie run, but, but I had great spotters in Todd and Dave Turn. and Marshall okay, and Clarkey and I just was able to get through this no problem and a testament to that is the fact that we didn't even have to use recovery gear. Sorry Todd, I know you were looking forward to doing that. Excellent. 
there's a Volkswagen van out here in the bush. There's got to be a story to that. Take that passenger down. And straighten out the driver. Perfect. And the final stretch on the trail before we get to Meat Cove is this very long, deep mud run. And the footage doesn't give it justice. If you watch Todd's video on his channel, and I'll put the link in the description section, maybe he has better footage, but it was scary and muddy, as you can see. But do you think it was worth it? Have a look. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Meet Cove. I have to tell you, we are so excited when we got there. The scenery is so amazing. So we just sort of took in the sights for a little bit and then the crew began collecting driftwood for a fire that night and we got to setting up our campsites. So here we are, we've been off-roading, we're camping, we're on the edge of the Atlantic Ocean with all this beautiful nature surrounding us. And we have it all to ourselves. Well, the next morning there was a little surprise. We had guests. Uh, Noah and Clarky, I hope you didn't bring chips in that tent last night. And while you're at it, watch out for the chips outside your tent. So after waking up on our third day of our off-road adventure to that amusing surprise, we decided to have breakfast take in the scenery, and spend the day in Meat Cove and go hiking. From just hiking around, I could just see so many beautiful spots that you could camp in this area, even this area that has a freshwater stream running through it. Like we even had a visitor, a seal. Well, well, the next morning we packed up our campsites and got ready to leave and head home. It's day four of our adventure and we're gonna make it out and say goodbye to the group. And then I'm going to talk to you about other things that you could do that perhaps will give you this kind of camping experience but won't involve perhaps such a hard off-road trail so stick around for that and if you're liking what you're seeing so far please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already so it's time to head out
So as we leave Meat Cove, I just want to make sure I give a special thank you to Todd for his invite to come and join his group on this excellent adventure. And thank you all very much. But now, Kathy and I are going to continue our own adventure and we're going to have a stop at the Celtic Lodge. We're going to show you some other camping opportunities, but this just gives us a nice little break to have a shower and a nice dinner prepared for us. But stick around because we have some great camping tips. Like say you want to go on a camping experience like at Meat Cove, but you don't want to do the intense off-road drive. Well, Corny Brook Campground is the place for you, so come along. Just a short drive around to the west side of the island on the Cabot Trail and you'll find Corny Brook Campground. Now you can't reserve a spot here, it's on a first come first serve basis, but when you get here you'll find a natural environment very similar to Meat Cove but it's in a national park and there's flush toilets and running water and even a wash station. And you can have a view like this. And one of the things you could do while you're in the area is hike the Skyline Trail. the gravel walkways and the boardwalks these trails are a little easier to walk on for most people and the views are also exceptional now the town of Shetty Camp is just 10 minutes away so if you're looking for something touristy or a pub or music or a restaurant it's available to you in case you wanted to just mix it up while you're camping we recommend this restaurant called La Brie. It was so good we went twice. So what you're seeing is the view from our room of our hotel. There are quite a number of hotels in the Shetty Camp area and some of them are right on this, the sea. Like you can see right here. Some of them are just across the road with the ocean view. But what we decided to do after being off road and camping is just to end our trip in a little hotel so we can shower up and get ready for our drive home. And thank you for joining us. I hope that you found it interesting. And if you enjoyed the video, let me know in the comments section below. Maybe give the video a thumbs up. Thank you very much. Up. Now for some cheaper jeeper tips. Some of you might remember the how I pack my Jeep to go camping video and I showed how I can fit the fridge underneath the sleeping camping platform. However on this trip I wanted to have a little more room where I store the fridge so I decided I would remove the sliding support piece and replace it with a bracket and a hinge for the pillow extension pieces. Let's have a look. Here you can see how I use a hinge to swing out an extension piece to support the platform pillow piece. So I just swing open the hinge and the support piece can accept the plate of the platform for which you would place your pillow. And that's it. And now I have more room underneath the platform for my fridge and other items. And finally, the winners of our 5,000 subscriber giveaway draw. Tim Melanowski. Kent Sentner. Pretzel. Eric. And JL Johnny's Jeep Life. Congratulations, everybody, and thank you for participating. The winners need to reach out to me with their contact information and I'll send them their prize choices.